On one hand, the dying Gaul is a stunning and striking piece of art. On the other, it is nothing more than an arrogant imperial power bragging and demonising its Celtic subject, albeit with a large touch of class. The dying Gaul statue of today is housed in the Capitoline Museums in Rome. It is thought to be an ancient Roman copy of a Greek bronze statue commissioned by Attalus I of Pergamon around 230 BC. Attalus I, who earned the surname Soter, meaning saviour during his reign, was a Roman ally and the ruler of the Greek-controlled city of Pergamon, which is in modern-day Turkey. During his reign, Attalus I won important battles against the Galatians of ancient Turkey, who were Celtic tribes who settled parts of Anatolia. The subject of the dying Gaul statue is thus most likely a fallen Galatian warrior, but perhaps it is a Gaulish Celt, and the sculpture of the work is thought to have been Epigonus. Initially the work was thought to have been depicting a dying gladiator, but it is generally accepted that it depicts a Celtic fighter. After all, the only thing he is wearing is a Celtic torque around his neck. Wounded in battle and resigned to his fate, there is a sword wound around his lower right ribcage, and he sits on his shield. The statue was discovered in the 17th century when excavating an area of Rome. Napoleon's forces took the statue to France as part of a peace treaty in the late 18th century, but it was returned to Rome in 1816. There is another feature of the Dying Gaul statue of note. The fallen Celtic warrior is depicted as being naked, wearing nothing but his prized Celtic torque. This raises a broader question. Did the ancient Celts fight naked? In relation to the Dying Gaul statue in particular, the Celtic subject may be depicted as being naked to give the work a heroic and epic quality. Yet, in general, there are actually many accounts in the historical record of Celtic tribes fighting with little to nothing on, although there seemed to be a reasonable degree of variation between different Celtic groups. The Greek historian Diodorus Succulus wrote in relation to the Celts that some of them have iron breastplates or chain mail, while others fight naked. Another ancient Greek historian, Polybius, wrote in more detail about the tactics of Galatian warriors who fought against the Roman army at the Battle of Telamon of 225 BC. The Insabris and the Boy wore trousers and light cloaks, but the Gaysate, in the love of glory and defiant spirit, had thrown off their garments and taken up their position in front of the whole army naked and wearing nothing but their arms. The appearance of these naked warriors was a terrifying spectacle, for they were all men of splendid physique and in the prime of life. And yet another Greek historian, Dionysius of Halicarnassus, wrote that, Our enemies fight naked. What injury could their long hair, their fierce looks, their clashing arms do us? These are mere symbols of barbarian boastfulness. As it turns out, the dying Gaul is the perfect demonstration of Hellenistic boastfulness. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell to turn on notifications. You can also support this work through buymeacoffee.com and Patreon. All the links are in the description below. Thanks again. Speak to you next time.